What are the most common causes of vertigo? That is a great question and one we're going to dive into and hopefully at the end you're going to have a better idea of what you should do next. Now, I'm a, welcome to the Vertigo Recovery Doctor. I'm Dr. Kevin Smith. I want to help you not only figure out what's causing your vertigo, but also how to recover from it. The best way for me to help you um, is to, or the best way to get help from me is to hit that subscribe button, hit the bell next to it to get uh, content whenever I release it or notifications. Um, now, so first on our list of most common causes of vertigo is BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. Um, now, this is a condition where the little crystals in the inner ear, they're supposed to be there, calcium carbonate crystals, they're supposed to sit on the sticky surface in the inner ear. Sometimes they get displaced. Um, now there's a lot of risk factors that can cause this. Vitamin D deficiency is one of them. Maybe osteoporosis where those crystals aren't forming uh, as, as they should. Um, maybe as, as we age, that little sticky matrix that holds them all together isn't holding them together as well as it should. But when these crystals get de displaced, they have the option of going into three different canals on each side. So six canals total. And most often they're in four out of the six. So anterior canal, not as often that they're in there. But most frequently in the posterior canals, less frequently in the horizontal canals, debated whether or not they actually get displaced in the anterior canal because of how you're oriented, those crystals should drop back down into where they're supposed to be if they do go up into the anterior canal. Now, this is most often experienced as a spinning sensation, but everybody describes their symptoms differently. Uh, some people just feel like they're getting pushed over. Some people feel like um, they're just falling off to the side. Um, or some people just say it's kind of like a lightheadedness. But most of the time, it's a spinning sensation. And the reason is because when those little crystals are displaced, moving throughout the canals and the inner ear system, those little changes are causing this rhythmic movement of your eyes that we call nystagmus. And that rhythmic movement, movement is making it seem like the room is spinning. So what do we do about this? We test you for it in the Dix Hall Pike test. We turn your head to the left 45 degrees, lay it back with 20 degrees of neck extension and look to see, one, are you experiencing vertigo? Are you experiencing dizziness? Are you having a spinning sensation? Um, two, are you um, having that nystagmus, that rhythmic eye, eye, move, eye movement? And then three, are your symptoms lasting less than a minute? Um, now, those, if, you're, if you're having those symptoms, most often your dizziness experience is, being, or is lasting for about 10 to 15 seconds. And if you're meeting those criteria, there's a high likelihood that this is BPPV and we can fix it pretty quickly, make sure um, you can do those little maneuvers um, to reposition it. But you gotta do the correct maneuver for the correct canal. Now, the second, um, oh, one more thing I was gonna say about that is that um, for BPPV, we're gonna look for this pattern of where you may have a little bit of a delay once you lay down and then your symptoms kind of ramp up and then they kind of ramp back down before going away. Now, it, you may have symptoms that last longer if it's up to that minute point, could still be BPPV, BPPV or positional vertigo. It just, those little crystals might be stuck to the cupula, this little structure at the end of the canal and need to be knocked off before they can get repositioned. Um, and you may also have multiple canal BPPV, that gets a little bit those conditions get a little bit trickier to resolve, uh, but still can fix it. Now, uh, second most common reason for vertigo, vestibular neuritis. So this is an inflammation of the inner ear. It can be bacterial or viral, most often viral infection. That inflammation weakens one side of the vestibular system, so weakens the nerve. And signals are not being sent as well as they should be or as well as they were um, especially compared to the other side. Now, the discrepancy between the two sides, one side's weakened from that inflammation and the other side's functioning normally, 
those two signals are not matching up with one another and you're getting this experience called, you're, you're getting this dizziness. And usually this is a dizziness that's described as a spinning sensation because you are getting that nystagmus, that rhythmic motion of the eyes because of the um, different signals between the two sides. Um, most often people will experience this kind of sudden onset of dizziness, spinning sensation that's lasting hours. So it's not like BPPV, it's lasting, that lasts seconds. This is usually lasting hours or even most of the day before progressively improving. So um, your brain will kind of adapt to the weakened signal to, to try and kind of even it out, um, kind of attenuate it. And that's when you'll start to have less of that constant dizziness, but then you'll be kind of left, still left with feeling off balance when you're walking, especially if you're falling off to one side. Um, you may feel like uh, whenever you move your head quickly, the, the textbook um, kind of symptom is that you move your head quickly and then the world has to kind of catch up with you. And so quick head turns, imbalance, especially when you're moving your head, especially when it's dark um, or your eyes are closed or you're in the shower and your eyes are closed. Um, and uh, kind of the, the progression of symptoms where it's lasting hours and then it progressively improves throughout the day or the, over the next couple of days. Um, and then you're kind of left with that, what we call a hypofunction. One side's not functioning as well as the other side. Um, that is kind of, that's kind of the, how vestibular neuritis, neuritis progresses. Um, now, the third most common reason for vertigo is a vestibular migraine. Now this is kind of known as like a sensitive brain. You're really sensitive to your environment. And what we're looking for is, uh, well first, migraines are, it's thought that they're caused by this electrical vent in the brain that causes vasodilation, constriction of the blood vessels. And then you have kind of this cascade of events with inflammatory cells and everything that, um, you know, the classic migraine causes a headache. But with vestibular migraines, you don't need any headache at all could just cause vertigo. But what we're often looking for is um, if you have any of those migraine symptoms like light or sound sensitivity, um, maybe you have an aura, like a visual aura where you're seeing lights before something happens. Um, maybe, maybe you're looking for like a sequence of events where you start to have, um, you start off with something that's going to tell you you're going to have dizziness, like a, like seeing lights, and then you progress into experiencing dizziness, and then you progress into feeling just some nausea, and then even afterwards, once it's gone, you're just kind of tired and fatigued the rest of the day. And uh, migraines can last um, from minutes to hours to days. Um, sometimes when you've stopped having a migraine, you can just kind of feel those like hangover symptoms for the next couple of days as well. Um, that, you know, migraines can get a little bit tricky because um, it's not always clear. And a lot of people just experience migraines differently because uh, it can affect different areas of the brain and everybody's a little bit different as well. So um, if you're having some kind of those kind of sensitivity to your environment, whether it's lights or sounds or, or um, uh, smell, as well, then um, you know, consider vestibular migraines. Um, all right, so the fourth condition that is very common is uh, cervicogenic dizziness. So this is dizziness that's coming from your neck. Now your neck gives you a sense of where you are in space. So all those muscles and joints in your neck um, send signals to the brain on where you are, whether your head's rotated left, or, oh, left, your left, my left, right? Um, or if you're tilted, um, it's always getting signals to the brain. Now, if you have some kind of impairments, especially if you've had some kind of trauma, whether it's, you know, you hit your head or you had some kind of whiplash, um, if you have chronic pain in the neck, that can affect it, inflammation, or even if you just, you know, chronic posture, if you have a lot of tightness or weakness in your neck, that can affect the signals, the quality of the signals that are being sent to your brain and cause you to have uh, what most people experience is kind of like a... Uh, head up in the clouds feeling um, where you just don't don't feel grounded um, People can have imbalance with this as well um, It's debated on whether this is a primary driver dizziness or if it kind of comes along with with other conditions 
you know, I see this a lot with vestibular neuritis because people don't want to move their head and then they start stiffening up in their neck and then it causes neck problems and they end up with cervicogenic dizziness. We see this a lot with migraines because migraines can often at times have uh, neck tightness that goes along with it or um, be even be a trigger for, for migraines. Um, there's a lot of different conditions that can kind of go along with cervicogenic dizziness. But I do see, you know, maybe some of those those other conditions have resolved and um, now you're just mostly experiencing dizziness from those, that cervicogenic dizziness. Um, I, do, I do see a lot of people that experience, who have cervicogenic dizziness, it'll be worse in the mornings and it kind of progresses or improves throughout the day. Um, sometimes I'm wondering, you know, sometimes that comes down to their sleeping ergonomics. So how they're sleeping, their pillow, um, if they're doing something while they sleep, that's creating or contributing to that impairment in the neck. Um, or if you're looking down at your phone for a while and then you come up and you're like, whoa, I'm a little bit dizzy. You know, one tip for that, bring what you're reading, whether it's your phone or your book, up to your line of sight so that you don't have to um, be in this flexed position, especially if you're experiencing cervicogenic dizziness. And the last condition is 3PD or persistent postural perceptual dizziness. Now this has um, often comes on after some kind of vestibular neuritis or with vestibular migraines um, and sometimes other conditions as well. But it's how the brain is processing all your sensory information. So not always is it a problem with the, um, the kind of the body itself, but it could be more of a problem with how the brain's interpreting all the information or how it's, how it's filtering up together because all those sensory systems have to work together to keep you feeling grounded and stable. And um, with 3PD, uh, you kind of lose that filter and you're not able to process information as efficiently as you once were. And um, that can make you feel dizzy, especially if you have too much information coming in, it kind of overwhelms the brain. Similar thing can happen with migraines, which is why you often see 3PD along with migraines too. Um, but if you're noticing that you have this kind of constant swaying or rocking sensation, um, it's worse with standing, it's better with sitting. Um, it's tough for you to go to busy visual environments like a grocery store, looking up and down the aisles with all, the, all those items or a crowded area. Um, you know, if you have more of that visual motion sensitivity, um, then, you know, you might want to be considering 3PD or persistent postural perceptual dizziness as something that might be contributing to your vertigo. Um, now, I hope this was helpful for you. If it was, please reach out or comment below. Um, if it was helpful for you, also subscribe and hit that little bell next to it so you get notifications when I come out with new content so I can help you with your vertigo and help you recover. Um, thank you for watching.